Why don't you prepare your hearts with us as we prepare now to say a word. God has smiled on me. He has set me free. God has chapter, the book of Genesis, we find these words written starting at about the 27th verse. And the boys grew. Esau was cunning like a hunter, a man of the field. Jacob was a plain man dwelling in tents. And Isaac loved Esau because he did eat of his venison. But Rebekah loved Jacob. And Jacob sought pottage. And Esau came from the field and he was faint. And Esau said to Jacob, feed me, I pray thee, with that same red pottage, for I am faint. Therefore was his name called Edom. And Jacob said, sell me this day thy birthright. And Esau said, behold, I am at the point to die. And what profit shall this birthright do me? And Jacob said, swear to me this day. And he swore unto him. And he sold his birthright 
unto Jacob. Then Jacob gave Esau bread and pottage of lentils, and he did eat and drink and rose up and went his way. Thus Esau despised his birthright. You might also consider for context a portion of scripture that's found in Matthew 27, beginning at the third verse. Then Judas, which had betrayed him, when he saw that he was condemned, repented himself and brought again the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned in that I have betrayed innocent blood. And they said, what is that to us? See thou to that. J.B. Phillips in his translation says, that's your business. <laughs> and he cast down the pieces of silver in the temple and departed and went and hanged himself. I want you to reason with me from this thought. You got what you wanted, but you lost what you had. Can I get a witness? You got what you wanted, but you lost what you had. I want to reason with you a little while about the greed of man, the restlessness of man, the dissatisfaction of man. Can I get a witness? Yeah. Otis Redding made a recording some time ago of which I'm sure none of you are familiar. <laughs> the song title was, I Can't Get No. <laughs> you heard that, too. Satisfaction. Amen. Amen. I, I tell you, that's true with some men and women today. Uh, no matter what they have, they are still dissatisfied. Can I get a witness? Some folk want everything they see you win. Can I get a witness? No matter what you have, they want it. They, they, they want your house. They want your car. They want your job. And some of them want your wife. I get a witness? But I come to tell you tonight, you better keep what you got. You know what you got, but you don't know what you're trying to get. You, you may get more than you bargained for. I could say more about that, but I won't. Everything that glitters ain't gold. Can I get a witness? You can't tell a book by its cover. Ain't that right? 
the grass always looks greener on the other side of the street. Now I want to tell you a story that my mother told me once was about dissatisfaction. So that was a bull once that was in a pasture. And this bull was knee deep in grass and had six heifer cows in the pasture with him. And he was the only bull. All he had to do was eat grass. Can I get a witness? and service them God. But in the next pastor, there were three other cows over there with a fist between them. And he didn't pay his cows any attention. He just kept his nose up against the fence, just saying, oh, I wish I could get over there. Wasn't paying what he had, no attention. Trying to get over there where the fence was. Well, he took all he could stand. That was a tall fence with three strands of barbed wire on top of it. One day he measured the height of that fence and backed up far enough to get him a good running start. He took off running toward that fence and, and leaped as high as he could and just did clear the fence and the Bob Watt cut him all under his stomach as he was falling over on the other side. He fell over on the other side and when he got up and discovered he was over there, he was so happy. He took off charging up to where those cows were. But when he got up to where they were, he discovered that they were bulls too. They got free gas and free electric. 
refrigerator full of food, free telephone in their room, clean clothes in their drawer, driving a car that daddy bought, got a gas car, don't pay for the insurance, not a tag on it. Can I get a witness? Got it made. But they come in and announce to you one day they won't move. They want their own apartment where they can entertain their guests. I, I recommend that you take the day off work and go with them. Can I get a witness? You go and help them find an apartment. Amen. You see, uh, they need to know how it feels to pick up a telephone and there's no dial tone. Phone been cut off. They need to know how it feels to stand in front of an empty refrigerator with nothing in it but a bottle of water. At home, they stand in front of the refrigerator with both doors open 15 minutes. Can I get a witness? Trying to decide. What am I They need to know what an empty refrigerator look like. I tell you, they need to know how it feels to turn on a light switch and no light come on. At home, they turn on all the lights in the house. Leave them all on. Can I get a witness? Yeah. They don't have to pay the light bill. They need to know how it feels to turn the thermostat up and no heat come up. Amen. Heat's been cut off. At home, they turn the heat up. They get so hot, then they open the window. You let them go on and get in a pot. I promise you they may get what they want, but they'll lose what they got. Let's look at our text for a minute here. I don't want to be long. We have a story here about two brothers. One named Jacob, and the other one named is Esau. Jacob was handsome and smooth and good to look at. And his mama loved him. <laughs> Hallelujah. He was a mama's boy. Esau was red and rough and hairy and was a hunter and his daddy loved him. Well, sometimes we take advantage of our physical endowment. However you look, you didn't have nothing to do with that. That decision was made for you, unless you got a good plastic surgeon. And many times, folk will take advantage of other folk based on their looks. Don't get quiet on me. Jacob just knew he was slick. 
until he met his father-in-law. Found out that was somebody else slicker than him. Can I get a witness? Amen. Laban out slick him. Well, let's talk about these brothers a while here. Uh, you see, under the Mosaic law, the firstborn got the birthright of his father. The firstborn. The birthright involved or included the succession of the official authority of the father. The authority of the father fell on the firstborn at the death of the father. The next thing is a double portion of the father's property went to the firstborn. That's why the prodigal son made that statement, give me that portion of the goods that befall his ministry. He, he, he didn't want his brother's portion, for his brother had a double portion, but he had a portion, and he wanted his portion, the firstborn. Esau had all of these things fall into him because he was the firstborn and had the birthright. One day Esau came from the field and he was faint. He was exhausted. He was tired. And he was hungry. Jacob was sodding pottery as was his custom. He was sodding pottage of lentils, a pot of red beans. Can I get a witness? Esau wanted to eat. Jacob wanted his birthright. They struck a deal. Jacob said to him, you give me your birthright and I'll give you a bowl of beans. The price Jacob bought his brother's birthright was a bowl of red beans, pottage of lentils and lentils of beans, isn't that right? Esau thought it over for a while and he said, what good is a birthright to me right now and I'm hungry? <laughs> Can I get a witness? Sometimes we give up too much for a barbecue sandwich. Can I get a witness? Some years ago I was in Chicago under the daily machine in my early ministry and I saw black folk selling their votes for a can of beer and a barbecue sandwich. I tell you, we give up too much sometime for a satisfied stomach. We can get along on a lot less than we think we can. Amen. Esau got what he wanted, but he lost what he had. He lost his position in the family. He lost the ability to pass on the lineage of Jesus down through his name. Can I get a witness? Nobody says Abraham, Isaac, and Esau. Can I get a witness? But they all said Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You can get hungry after 
conquer this world if you want to. But you will lose your spirit. You will lose your ability to shout. You will lose your fellowship with the master. Reason some folk can't shout is that they are hungry after the world. Reason some folk can't cry, they lost their spirit. For the spirit will not dwell in an unclean temple. Can I get a witness? It's a terrible thing to be sitting up in church. Everybody shout. Everybody praising God. Folk got their pocket handkerchiefs out and you don't feel nothing. I tell you, that's a terrible thing to sit there and not be able to feel the master's love. Many church folk have left the church for a good time. They left the church to go out in the world after nose candy. Can I get a witness? They left the church to go out in the world after Mary Jane. Can I get a witness? They can have a good time. They can get what they want, but they'll lose what they got. Church folk will feed you when the world will give you a can of beer. I remember my early days in Chicago. You'd go visiting somebody and you'd smell corn muffins in the kitchen. You'd smell chicken frying and you'd smell corn being fried in the kitchen. You'd smell a ton of green stewing. You'd be just sitting there wondering when dinner was going to be served. After a while, one of them says, excuse me, please, y'all talk on. <laughs> Would you like another can of beer? <laughs> they go on in the kitchen, stay about 15, 20 minutes, come back wiping grease <laughs> from around their mouth. Can I get a witness? And say, can I get you something else to drink? And, they sit down and say, now, where were we, where were we? And the other one will say, y'all, excuse me a minute. Yeah. And they go on in the kitchen and, amen, and, and they, amen, and will not offer you a chicken bone. The world operates like that. When you leave the church, and go out in the world, you can get what you want, but you lose what you got. Church folk are the best folk in the world. They'll feed you when you're hungry. They'll give you money to put in your pocket when you're broke. They'll give you a warm bed to sleep in when you're outdoors. And they'll put clothes on your back when you're naked. I don't know where you are now, but if you're not in the church somewhere, you are in trouble. You need to be in the church. Let me look a little further here. Samson was a strong man. He saw a beautiful Philistine woman named Delilah and wanted her. We, we can understand that. Samson knew that he was a Nazarite. He knew that strong drink 
should never touch his lips, nor metal his head. Samson was never to reveal the secret of his strength, which was in his head. Christians, we better be careful. The world wants to know our weak spot so they can destroy us. This beautiful woman struck a conspiracy with the Philistines because Samson was giving them all kinds of trouble. He had killed 10,000 of them with the jawbone of a donkey. Uh, so they struck a deal with her. We'll give you 10,000 pieces of silver if you can get rid of this troublemaker for us. She said, that sound all right to me. Samson got what he wanted. She said to him, Samson, what makes you so strong? What would it take to make you weak? Like a natural man. Samson said, if you bind me with seven green widths, I'll become weak like a natural man. And as he slept, she bound him with seven green widths and shook him and said, Samson, the Philistines be upon you. Yeah. He snapped him and jumped up and she said, you lied to me. <laughs> you said if I bound you with seven green widths, you'd become weak like a natural man. Why did you lie to me? Tell me, what will it take? Yeah. Samson said to her, if you go get a new rope and bind me with that new rope, I'll become weak as any other man. And she bound him with a new rope and shook him and said, Samson, the Philistines are coming. Yeah. He jumped up and snapped the ropes. She said, why are you playing with me? You don't care for me, you just playing with me. Why, why would you do this to me? Uh, you don't love me. Samson, what will it take to make you weak? Like a natural man. He said, if you take the seven locks of my hair and fasten them with a wedge and put a pin in them, I'll become weak like a natural man. Samson need to do something about his sleeping because he <laughs> went to sleep too much. <laughs> I ain't got nothing to do with what put him to sleep. <laughs> I didn't think he slept too much. <laughs> and as he slept, she took the web and bound his seven locks of his hair and took a pin and drove it into a bee. And she said to him, Samson, arrive, the Philistines come. And he jumped up and snapped the bee and the pin with his long hair. She said to him, you playing with me. You don't love me. And she cried. I believe because women know the moving power of tears. <laughs> Nothing else don't work, they try crying. <laughs> That'll generally get it. <laughs> and the Bible says that she vexed him <laughs> night and day <laughs> until he told her 
If I be shaven of my head, I shall become weak like any other man. And the Bible says she caused him to sleep in her lap. Samson had a terrible problem. He slept too much. He should do something about that. But while he slept, she called another one to come in and shave his head. She bound him and they led him away captive, weak, unable to do anything to defend himself. He got ooh, what he wanted, but he lost what he had. He lost his hat. He lost his strength. He lost his sight. And he lost his life. He got what he wanted, but he lost what he had. I don't want to be long here, but I got to say a word about David. David saw a beautiful nude woman bathing on a rooftop. I wouldn't accuse David of being a peeping Tom. Well, she was out in the open according to the Bible. And he saw her and wanted her. He said, uh, King, that's Uriah's wife. He said, send, send for her, tell her the king wants her. Being an obedient subject, she came. And there a relationship developed until she became with child while her husband was in the army. You don't hear me. <laughs> David said, uh, where is he? Said, uh, King, he is fighting with Joab up on the front. Said, send for him. I'm gonna sign an executive order giving him a 30-day furlough. Bring him home. And he came home on a furlough, and he, he was told to go on home and enjoy your family life. But Uriah would not go in the bedroom. He slept at the door. And she said to David, when he called her on the phone, she said, it ain't working. He, he won't come in here. We got to do something better than this. Can I get a witness? The king said, well, after a couple of times of trying to get him drunk on wine and stuff, said, tell him to stop by here on his way back to the front line. I got a message I want to give to Joab by him. And he wrote out on the note, put you right on our most dangerous front. And he gave the note to Uriah. And he took it today to Joab. Joab read it and gave Uriah another assignment. He was killed in battle for his king. David got what he wanted. But he lost what he had. The prophet Nathan said to David, the sword shall never leave thine house. Didn't he say that? We know what happened. God took the life of the child, wouldn't let the child live. One of David's sons raped his sister. Brother came in and caught him and killed him. We know what happened. Uh, David lost his joy. Yeah. He lost 
his free spirit. He lost his gladness. And he lost his fellowship with God. He got what he wanted. But he lost what he had. As I come to my conclusion, we hear Judas talking to the Roman soldier. We hear Judas when he said, let's root a bargain, for I have betrayed innocent blood. You don't hear me. Uh, let's go back on the deal I made with you. Uh, for this is an innocent man. I heard them say to him, what is that to us? That's your business. Yeah, you attend to that. Uh, you got what you wanted. And that was 30 pieces of silver. Uh, tell me, Judas, why did you turn Jesus in? Uh, you knew that Jesus was the promised Messiah. You knew that Jesus was the Son of God. You knew that Jesus was a good man. And a perfect man. Uh, you knew that Jesus was a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. Let me tell you one thing tonight, brethren. Uh, Judas was there when Jesus changed water to wine. He knew that he was the Son of God. Judas was right there when Jesus raised Jairus' daughter from the dead, he knew that Jesus was a good man. Judas was right there when Jesus came walking on the bosom of the sea, made a highway in the middle of the blue ether. Judas was right there when Jesus took a schoolboy's lunch and fed 5,000 folks. You don't hear me. Judas was right there when Jesus saw a man at a pool for 38 long years. Judas was right there when Jesus told him to rise, take up your bed, Put his bed on his shoulder and got up and went on down the road. Tell me, Judas, why did you turn Jesus in? Yeah! Judas was a greedy man. Judas, he got what he wanted, but he lost what he had. Judas was when a woman that had an issue of blood touched the hem of his garment and was made whole, you know him. Judas was right there when Jesus told.